Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, uh, what I'm talking to you about today is this stuff. Vizine, Visine, Mizine. Get the red out? Uh, well today it's gonna get the dead out. In this old video, I'm gonna yap away about a number of stories, some big, some small, each linked by a lovely drop of Visine. More like a tremendous squirt. Uh, that sounds, uh, this stuff mixed with some other stuff. I mean, it's, it's eye drops, not drops dead, but it's all the same to these characters. It's all goo, really, so let's give it just that. So first of all, I've showed this like five times, but check it out. I got Visine as my prop. Pretty proud of myself. Focus, bitch. What do you think? I'm trying to impress you. It's not working, is it? You know, we have a lot of fun on this show, my friends, but right now I want to get serious. Because Visine is no joke. I for one really hate using it. Eyes freak me out, I simply won't have it. But on a lighter note, let me tell you a small anecdote about one student in a high school in Fellerville, Michigan who obviously assumed the same about their teacher. That, you know, ugh, eyes. So he started putting it in his teacher's coffee. Actually, wait, no, I think I got my wires crossed here. The teacher believes this went on for several days. She first started getting sick on a Thursday and Friday, then went home, felt better over the weekend, came back and got even sicker the following week. In May 2014, algebra teacher Mary Aldecoa started getting very ill. She had horrible stomach pains and headaches and was out of commission for a time. Then, a rumor went around that, over a five-day period, one of the students had been drip-dripping Visine into her coffee, the coffee she had left on her table in class. This all came out, Mary, she did make a full recovery and the student was suspended for a year. Great job! But I have no doubt that he just saw it as a harmless prank. And it's not. <laughs> it could kill people. But she got off very lightly compared to some of the other stories I'm going to tell you about. Visine and other eye drops contain a chemical called tetrahydrozoline. It's not meant to go in the gob, right? Because if it does, it gets you really fucked up. And not in a good way. It's, it's pretty toxic. If you take enough of it, it will shut down your central nervous system. And then shut you down. There's a couple of stories I want to look at uh, in this old video. All had eye problems, as in, I am in trouble. So that means more than one, but let's begin with just that in a story that takes us to mystical South Carolina. York County be the place that we, uh, be, to begin. And let me begin, by the way, by saying that we have been there before with the story, uh, if you remember, of Melvin Roberts. No spoilers, but uh, the woman he was married to was gas and not in a good way. So in Uppity, South Carolina lies the county of York. There's a wily old lake named Lake Wiley, and that is where the Claytons lived, the Claytons being Stephen and his wife, Lana. And it was there that in July 2018, the police entered their house on Island Forks Road. Stephen was lying at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> So she said she left the next day. Okay. Pretty soon the police started knocking around the house, and what was initially assumed to have been some kind of some kind of heart attack, you know, like uh, the regular kind, uh, that theory was soon usurped by Lana's actions. Or rather, a lack of them. Steve and Lana had been married for five years by the time 2018 rolled around. And now it was no more. Steve Clayton was born in 1954, growing up with three sisters in South Florida. Here is Steve Clayton walking one of his sisters down the aisle. He graduated Florida State University in 1976 with one of them finance degrees and went to start a business, a beeswax. Physical Therapy Resources was the name of the game with therapy centers across America. It was big, he made a few scarol and he eventually uh, sold his, his half it and went on to become a full-on rape philanthropist, that's the one, uh, at age 41. He became rich and successful at a relatively young age, and what did he want to do with it? Pay it forward by giving it back to the new up-and-comers. 
He was a decent guy who wasn't satisfied with his own success, he wanted others to succeed too. He helped uh, young, you know, entrepreneurs with, with advice, with his resources, any, any strings he could pull, he would pull on the darn treads. He wouldn't yuck their yums, he was happy to support. And he was a fun guy to be around. Or at least, that's what Lana Walsh thought when they met in 2010. Stephen was 55 years old when they started dating. He had moved up from South Florida to North Carolina. And that's where he met Lana, 12 years younger than Stevie. Steve could never really find the right woman for him. He, he was driven, he was outgoing, and despite being the life of the party, he didn't have much luck in love. He'd been up and down the aisle a couple of times, but nothing stuck. But now his luck is about to change, and then change again. Lana was a nurse from Oklahoma, a sweet, quiet lady, unlike the gregarious Steve. But they seemed to make quite the pair, the yin to the yang. In 2013, they married, and in 2015, moved into a new home on Lake Wiley, South Carolina, into a house remodeled after George Washington's Mount Vernon estate. Look at you! Life was good, until June 2018, of course. He started getting nauseous, vertigo, generally just quite a ill feeling. Lana sent him to bed, he ended up sleeping for two days straight. Bollocks, he was. But two weeks later, he was back to his old self, life at a party, dancing away with Lana at a party he hosted. A month later, though, after that party, this call came in. Public safety communication, Mr. Amber. Yes, ma'am, I'm uh, down at Lake Wiley, 4506 Island Fork Road. I was just riding by and a woman came running out and said her husband fell down the steps and she thinks he's dead. So we need an ambulance. Okay, and so the female flagged you down and said her husband fell down the steps? She was just hysterical. Uh, I think he might be gone. Okay, but I do have everyone coming lights and sirens. I know you don't want to bother her. Has he been sick recently? She, she said he had vertigo. Kind of having guilt to it about oh, no. not checking on him. Just so, take a look, see if you yes, see any signs of him falling or anything. Okay, ma'am, I'm, I'm Sergeant Day. I'm going to be here for just your time. I'm going to be here for just a little while until the coroner gets here. Lana said she had seen him that morning fast asleep. Then she went out to cut the grass, and when she came back in, he was dropped dead at the bottom of the stairs. Miss Clayton, you were outside. You were working outside. So I was mowing the lawn real quick, and when I came in, it was terrifying. I'm so sorry. I tried to put the blanket underneath him, trying to see if I could grab his face and turn it over. I couldn't. Yes, ma'am. I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't know how he made it. I don't know what he was thinking. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, ma'am.
body cam showed that he had been bedridden for days. But it also showed Visine on a dresser on the other side of the bedroom. So he had been sucking it down or it had been given to him. And the way he was, he had been given quite a lot of it over a number of days. Not like one sip. In fact, maybe he'd even been given it one month before. Like a month before when he was sick and he slept for two days, Visine will make you as sick as he was. So the toxicology report said tetrahydro... thing... Uh, probably killed him. So how did it get there? That was a question I put to Lana. As I said, he was bedridden. Visine was on the other side of the room. Miss Clayton, we're, uh, we're sorry for his loss. You are by no means in any trouble with this toxicology report that came back. Right now, the death is suspicious in nature. You know, if you were a witness in this case for us, Somehow or other, there was a large amount of Vizine in his system. So that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. Okay, that. so I, I know he put the Vizine in, in his coffee. He puts it in there every What do you know about it? What do I know about it? Um, oh, I know, um, I know it makes you have diarrhea. I didn't think Vizine was anything that would be serious to your, to your health. How was, how was your life been? With him, sometimes we would have fun and everything, and then sometimes, you know, I would be like on eggshells. Yeah, all the time I was on eggshells. Like everybody that think he was perfect. Oh, he, had, well, he, had a, he had a genius IQ, and he was known for being an affluent businessman, for mentoring kids, for helping people, for being the, the fun, um, like guy. But that's not the way he was. That's I I feel I'm painting a bad picture of him. He wasn't, you know, a monster. I I feel like you guys are, you know, doing your job and you're, you know, wondering if I killed my husband and I did not kill my husband. Lana's tactic was to say, well, this guy was a bit of a shit. He was an abusive son of a gun. See, this is some of that kind of style bullshit. Oh fuck, they're on to me. Um, whatever you think I did, he did worse to me. You a little bit about Stephen, that um, it was worse than what I told you. He was verbally and physically abusive, and yell at me and call me names. His anger built up. You know, I would do something that would irritate him until the point where he would explode. Okay. My girlfriend at work told me, "You want to get even with somebody? You know, put Visine in a drink; it'll cause diarrhea." And when I saw that Visine on the table, it just came back to me, and I just. I just took and squirted it. And what did you squirt it into? His water. Into his water. I just saw it and just, I was just so angry and I just took and squirted it. I think that's what the whole thing is. The police left and went back to decide what to charge her with. The next day when they came back, they found notes on the door. Lana was in the bed. She had tried to, to, to kill herself. They managed to get to her in time and took her to the hospital where her stomach was pumped. And she was then arrested and charged with murder. Lana then took a plea deal and she was charged with manslaughter, uh, not murder. And you know, she was saying she had, uh, wait, what'd she say? She had just tried to make him shit himself and she killed him. She was still lying then. She said she'd given him one dose to make him shit his pants when he had clearly been bedridden for days. Like one squirt squirt of Visine won't won't kill you. You have to be like it takes quite a lot to, to poison him. You know, she he had been taking it over she'd been she'd been putting it in his drinks over the course of like a week. And she probably tried it a month before, tested it out to see and he recovered after a couple of days, and then she was like, Alright, <laughs> that was practice, this one's for real. Hmm, interesting. Well, we will just have to take her unbelievable word for it. She got twenty-five years in prison for that. A tangled web we weave. Miss Clayton, you sure have tangled this one up. Did you let him suffer for three days? After finding out the Visine was a cause of death, I attempted to take my life as well. I couldn't live with the thought that he did such a terrible thing. Now, much like I just told you the story of uh, Lana Clayton, somebody else heard that story too, and he was inspired. 
Oh man, uh, this guy is stupid as shit. In 2018, a woman named Stacy Hunsucker died. She had been poisoned with her old friend tetrahydrazoline. Nailed it. Now, allegedly, her husband Josh Hunsucker got the gosh darn idea from Lana Clayton. He'd heard about her story in the news and he was like, well, <laughs> don't mind if I do. Gaston County, North Carolina is where this all went down, just on the other side of the border from York County. Wasn't even far away. Josh and Stacy were high school sweethearts living in Mount Holly. They had been married for eight years and had two young daughters together, Josh a paramedic, Stacy a teacher. Josh was the one who found his wife. Uh, uh, found his wife four different ways, if you can believe that. Well, I mean, I found her like this way. Oh, wait, no, I mean, uh... One story was that he went outside the house to ensure the cars were locked as there had been burglaries in the area. Another was he went outside to cut wood, another just to burn some energy, and another was that he was working on his laptop with his back to his wife. Regardless, he didn't see what happened, one second she was fine, the next he found her slumped over on the couch, and she was gone. After his wife Stacy's death, Josh collected about $250,000 in... What happened though, and how this started kind of unfolding, was that Stacy's mom had it going on. She had something in her head, which was basically, this is weird as shit, and that there might be some kind of insurance bullshit uh, going on. Stacy's mother believed that her son-in-law, I guess ex-son-in-law now, Josh had been having an affair before uh, Stacy died, and now his mistress was now his girlfriend. She would be right in believing that, by the way. He had been having an affair. This new chick moved into his home that he had shared with his now deceased wife, like, within a couple of months. In fact, uh, uh, his Josh's co-workers would say, he moved on pretty quickly and was like, shit happens. Now Josh, he had Stacy cremated, like, immediately uh, after her funeral, uh, right away, right? So investigating how she actually died would be pretty, pretty difficult, right? But get a load of this. Stacy just so happened to have been an organ donor, and blood samples were taken um, from her after, her after her death. And they still had those blood samples, even though her, she, you know, she was ash. The investigators were then still able to do a toxicology report, and guess what? In her blood, you'll never believe this, was a fatal amount of tetrahydro... Uh, uh, watch Visine. A North Carolina paramedic whose wife died of what was thought to be a heart attack is now charged with her murder. Prosecutors in Gaston County say Joshua Hunsucker poisoned the mother of his children using eye drops. Family and friends grew suspicious after Stacy Hunsucker's death last September. The victim's mother claimed insurance fraud after Hunsucker crushed, cashed in his wife's $250,000 life insurance policies and refused to allow an autopsy. Co-workers also expressed concerns about how quickly he moved on with a new girlfriend. The complaint alleges Hunsucker murdered his wife so he could collect that money and be with his mistress. The family claims Hunsucker was inspired to weaponize eye drops after a similar case last year in York County, South Carolina, where a woman was accused of murdering her husband with over-the-counter eye drops. Josh was arrested and charged with first-degree murder in December 2019. His trial has, has not been scheduled. He's also <laughs> got a little bit more trouble than that, though. Uh, he's got a wrongful death suit from Stacy's family. He was also indicted for insurance fraud, and in 2019, he set fire to a syringe pump while inside a medical helicopter during flight. It was just after midnight when this radio transmission came through. Hey, do you have any calls referenced like a helicopter landing on the side of Independence Boulevard? It was one of Atrium Health's Med Center Air helicopters. One of the crew members, flight paramedic Joshua Hunsucker. Looks like it's landed over here for some reason. That reason, we're now learning, according to CMPD, Hunsucker set fire to a syringe pump while the helicopter was mid-flight. No one was injured. They had to make an emergency landing, and he was placed on administrative leave. That's another felony. Why a paramedic would set medical equipment on fire inside a helicopter while it was in the air? I don't know. And here's another one. All right, okay, and first off, I have to say, 
We got a fucking ban uh, eye drops in South Carolina. Let's, to be safe, let's just say both Carolinas because it's pissing everybody off, as you can tell. Two security guards in Hilton Head, South Carolina, allegedly tried to poison their supervisor. Hunter Howard and Andrew Dotty put eye drops in their boss's coffee. Now, the supervisor didn't drink it. I assume someone saw and stopped him from drinking it. Uh, and not a whole lot is out there about this one. Maybe they just fucking hated their jobs, or they thought it would be pretty funny. Or maybe their supervisor is just a dickhead. Who am I to judge? And finally, we have Jesse Rose Ker... Uh, Kerchevsky? Zoo... What? Zevsis. Uh, Jesse Polish surname. Thankfully, it's not Caroline at this one, it's Wisconsin. Knocking you out of the park. There, Jesse, 36 years old, is accused of using eye drops, those dirty dogs with the titty hitty drozzy, to poison and kill her friend, Lynn Hernan. What happened? Well, I hear you're barking, big dog. It went down like this. See, 64 year old Lynn was found dead in October 2018. Jesse had found her and called the police. And when the police arrived, they found Lynn pale, unconscious, and surrounded by crushed up medication. She died shortly after. Crushed up powder? Devil's dandruff, dare I say? Well, whatever it was, it was medication and looks like a drug overdose, you guys. Case closed. Technically, it is a drug overdose, actually. Jesse had been caring for, uh, for Lynn and she said, well, she said she was, you know, a little bit suicidal. Uh, she'd been talking about it for a couple of days. She'd been a little bit weird lately, so I guess she just friggin' went ahead and did it. Others who knew Lynn, though, said, that doesn't sound right. Later, Jessie and her mother, uh, Jennifer Flowers, were found to be driving Lynn's Jeep, a Jeep Lynn had promised to her nephew, Lynn's nephew. They were also living in Lynn's house. Hmm, interesting. A close friend of Lynn's was the one to call the police and be like, uh, yeah, she wasn't suicidal and maybe you should look at the mother-daughter situation we got going on here. They essentially inserted themselves into Lynn's life. It also appeared that Lynn had left everything in her will to Jesse. A Jesse, the police learned, who had a history of forgery and fraud convictions. She had created bank accounts in other people's names, tried to pay hotel bills with fake checks, gotten a loan for a car in her mother's name, and had a gambling addiction, an addiction she financed via fraudulent loans. Lynn then was later found to have a fatal uh, dose of tetrahydrazoline in her system. Her manner of death was changed from suicide to homicide. Jesse, in the meantime, by the way, before this came out, was calling the medical examiner's office all the time, being like, wanna maybe fill me in? Jesse told everyone, her boyfriend even, that she was pretty much a full-time carer for Lynn when in reality, she would go over a couple of times a month and just smoke cigarettes. She also had been stealing money from Lynn. So things became pretty clear. But when interviewed, Jesse told police that yeah, Lynn took eye drops all the time. That was her thing. That's why there was so much uh, tetrahydrazoline in her system. She, just, she was just mad about eye drops. The cops retorted with, well, you're not gonna have that much in your blood just by squirting it in your eyes. But then she was like, oh wait, yeah, actually I have seen uh, Lynn drink the scene, now that you mention it, if you can only have that much in your system by drinking it. Yeah, definitely seen her drinking it. In fact, the day before she died, she was having Visine and vodka cocktails. Delicious. Also, Jessie had to explain to the police that any money she spent uh, that was Lynn's, she, Lynn had given her consent to do so. Lynn had basically given Jesse uh, a credit card and was like, here, you know, here's your payment for looking after me. The cops didn't believe that at all. Of course, Jessie kept going on with, well, Lynn talked about killing herself all the time, so I guess she just went ahead and, and uh, had enough. Again, like, third time lucky the police did not believe that. The financial records showed that, well, Jessie was allegedly using Lynn's bank accounts like her own piggy banks to the tune of almost $300,000. About 130000 of that was transferred directly to Jessie herself. So, Lynn was quite a wealthy woman, and when she died, she was over 70 grand in debt. In June 2021, Jesse was charged with first degree intentional homicide. No trial date set as of yet. 37 year old Jesse Kirkzuski appeared in Waukesha County Court Monday, facing three charges, including first degree intentional homicide. The state believes this defendant has evidenced her capacity to take advantage 
of at-risk individuals and poses a risk to the public both through her financial victimization and ultimately violent behavior toward victim A in this case. And there you have it, folks. A number of stories of people being poisoned and, and murdered. Good old Visine. Uh, you know, get the red out, get the dead out. Come on now. People are just mad to use it. But then again, in a lot of other stories I've covered, people used antifreeze instead. Um, I think that one might be a little bit... They're both actually equally horrific. Both sound like incredibly painful ways to go. Some people who almost got away with it. Others who thought it was just a prank, bro. And others who were maybe just a little bit pissed off. And then whatever Jesse was. Mad for the money, that's what. Don't get any ideas, folks. Remember, right? Visine only for the eyesine. Eye drops, not drops dead. Just be a little bitch. Uh, like me, who can't use eye drops because it freaks them out too much. Ah, it sucks. Uh, it actually got in my mouth. Oh, fuck. Thank you. Uh, really. A lot for watching. Uh, means so much to me. I hope you enjoyed the video, or at least found it kind of bit interesting. Um, but really, uh, it means a lot that you're watching. So here, listen. Go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next old video. I'll talk to you then. Um, until then, though, please... Take care of each other and yourselves, because I love you. My care.